So I was watching a YouTube video years ago about this new, really quirky, fabulous restaurant in London called The Cheese Bar that had a cheese conveyor belt. Pick and cheese. And I thought, oh yes, I need to try that. But then pandemic, I haven't been able to come here. So here we are, 2022. I'm finally getting to celebrate my birthday in London, picking cheese off a cheese conveyor belt. So I will film in the restaurant, but I can't talk in the restaurant because there is a live band playing steel drums about three meters away and it's super loud. So I'll do voiceover to tell you how fabulous the cheese was. We love the food markets in London, and I'll be doing a video soon of our favorites. This location of the cheese bar that we visited was in the Seven Dials Market. It's a fabulous place with a broad assortment of delicious foods on offer, including burgers, Indian food, Latin food, a delicious collection of different Chinese food stalls, phenomenal looking pizza, and amazing pastries, crepes, and waffles as well. Honestly, I'd like to spend a week just eating my way through every menu in this place. But here at the Pick and Cheese location of the Cheese Bar at Seven Dials, it's all about cheese. Specifically, British cheese. It comes straight to you at the bar on what is best described as a sushi-style conveyor belt. The price for each cheese pairing is based on the color of the plate it's on. Each dome-covered plate has a small number which corresponds with the menu and describes the cheese offering. For example, this yummy delight is a wedge of Yarlington from Gloucestershire, my favorite county of course, and it's paired with candied peanuts. This was a very tasty soft cheese, a bit like brie. And I thought having the funky cheese paired with the sweet and nutty candied peanuts was absolutely brilliant. Next up, I tried the Berkswell cheese. Although we're in England, so maybe it's pronounced Barkswell? Let me know in the comments. This cheese is from Warwickshire and tastes like a Manchego cheese you'd get at a tapas bar in Spain. It was sharp and strong and perfect with the sweet almond macaroon that came with it. Speaking of strong cheeses, I went for a blue cheese next, the Coat Hill Blue from Lincolnshire. I was excited to try it because I'm not afraid of blue cheese and because it came paired with a flapjack and I adore flapjacks. Unfortunately, this was my least favorite plate. I liked that the cheese was a soft blue, but I didn't love the flavor, and it just seemed not to complement the flapjack. I ate it with some pickles instead, and that was better. Speaking of which, the plate of bread and butter pickles was fabulous. As always, they're the perfect thing to eat with cheese, and these were especially tasty. And now for a Welsh cheese. This is Sinarth Brie, which was served with a chili jam. I really loved this one. The brie was really mellow and creamy and delicious and perfectly paired with the piquant chili jam. Next, I'll highlight a Cornish cheese I tried. This Cornish Gouda, or Howda, is a scrumptious hard Howda cheese with a unique personality. My only issue is that it was paired with British fudge. Longtime subscribers will know that I have a disapproving attitude toward this food. See link in the description for more on that topic. In this instance, the cloyingly sweet fudge overpowered the lovely cheese. It was just not the best combination with this cheese. Instead, I ate it with the bread and butter pickles and that was much better. And finally, for the piece de resistance, my cheesy dessert. I chose off the conveyor belt this oyster opening to reveal its cheesy pearl of deliciousness. This is the whipped rosary goat's cheese donut with apricot and vanilla jam. It was unusual, but super yummy. Great combinations of flavors and textures. An ideal way to end my parade of cheese. And now I'd like to share my five tips on how to make the most of your visit to pick and cheese. First of all, Book ahead and go as a party of between one and three people because otherwise you won't get a spot at the bar. And you definitely want a front row seat to the conveyor belt. 
Secondly, check the website and consider going on a day when they have specials. Subject to change, but I saw special deals both for Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Go with a cheese head friend. Ian just doesn't like cheese enough and wasn't willing to share all the different plates with me, which limited how many different kinds I could try. I wanted to try even more. So next time I come, I will bring a true cheese fan who can support me in trying more cheeses next time, along with having some of my favorites again. Stick to eating what's on the conveyor plates. Ian ordered a grilled cheese sandwich off the menu instead of eating the conveyor plates in front of us. Normally, I love grilled cheese sandwiches, but this one honestly wasn't that great. The toasties at Camden Market or another outdoor food marketplace are usually much better. And finally, plan your eating sequence just like you would on a cheese board. Follow the sign on the wall here for advice and start with mild cheeses first and then work up to more pungent, strong cheeses. Be sure to try a cheesy dessert or two at the end, of course. I hope you have the opportunity to enjoy this cheese smorgasbord of fun yourself. Please let me know if you fancy a go and if you've been, tell me what you liked there because I will be going back. If you love British cheese, check out this British cheese taste test video of mine. And if you love London, check out this London video. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.